Can you imagine being stabbed and tortured as the whole world watched on live stream? Well, Chinese food blogger Jan Shoujong doesn't have to imagine it. That was what happened to him, and a few minutes later, he was dead. But why exactly did his killer choose to stab him on live stream? And was there a way to have saved his life? This is the tragic story of Jan Shoujing. This tragic story began with love. In this case, not romantic love. A love for food and travel. 29-year-old Jan Shoshing was a food lover through and through, and he loved the feeling of delicious cuisine hitting his tongue as he savored every last bite. The only thing he loved almost as much as food was travel. He loved visiting new places and exploring the connection between gorgeous landscapes and mouth-watering cuisine. He believed food could tell a story. To him, Food wasn't just food. It provided a window into the culture and history of a place. And he loved discovering all the diverse tastes that exist in the world. He was born in China, but as his 20s were passing him by, he realized that he wanted something different. He wanted to explore beyond what he already knew. He needed to see the world. So he decided to work hard to make money that would allow him to live his dream. And fortunately for Jan, he made enough money and suddenly his dream was within reach. He could feel it in his fingertips. He packed up his things, said goodbye to his family and friends, and set sail for his first destination, Africa. Jan intended to spend some time exploring Africa before his love for food and travel took him somewhere else. But when he got to Africa, he fell in love. Even though he had little in common with the natives, the continent felt like home to him. So he decided to stay longer than he had planned to figure out why he felt this way. But even as he was making this decision, he knew that he would never leave this continent that was already home for him. Out of all the African countries that Jan had been to, Zambia stood out the most to him. He loved the food, the people, and the atmosphere so much that he never wanted to leave. So he decided to settle in Zambia. Jan felt a magnetic pull in Zambia, almost like he was always meant to be there. He didn't know what it was, but he decided to follow his gut, believing that soon enough it would be revealed to him. And Jan was right. Not long after he settled in Zambia, he met a woman named Margaret and everything began to make sense. He knew in his gut that Margaret was the reason he felt the magnetic pull. When Margaret and Jan met, they immediately became friends, and a short while into their friendship, they fell in love. Jan knew that the way he felt about Margaret was special, and he had never felt that way about anyone. And by December 2022, Jan was ready to propose to Margaret and begin his new life with her. He began to look forward to the day he would make Margaret his forever. But unfortunately, that day never came. At the time that Jan met Margaret, he was just a regular guy. He hadn't become a famous food blogger yet. But as he explored Zambi's wonderful terrain and its mouth-watering food, he had a light bulb moment. He knew that what he was experiencing was unique and needed to be shared with other people. So he decided to bring the world in on his daily adventures in Zambia. He created a social media platform. His platform of choice was TikTok, and he chose a witty name, Fatty Goes to Africa. He started sharing Zambia's gorgeous sights, delicious cuisine, and culture with his followers on TikTok. He and Margaret were taking people on TikTok through shops, markets, and restaurants in Zambia. They made videos of themselves buying local delicacies, shopping for local spices, sweet treats, they shared every step of their adventure with people on TikTok. And soon enough, their light and humorous videos began to attract people. And what had started as a fun hobby generated millions of views and followers. Before Jan knew it, his fan base was reaching 5 million followers. A lot of his fan base were from China, just like Jan. And like Jan, they too dreamt of the day that they would get to explore the world and try out new food. Jan's followers quickly connected to his light and fun character, as well as his his love story with Margaret. When Jan hit 5 million followers, his life changed. But as his followers increased, so did the demands for his channel. Jan wanted to make his channel better and get his content out faster. And having 5 million followers meant he was making money. Jan was making more money live streaming now than he ever did before. So he decided now was the best time to bring on people. He knew he no longer had to make his videos himself. He wanted to have a team of people to help him with the growing demands of his channel. And because there's a growing community of young Chinese people in Africa, some of whom were also influencers, Jan decided to connect with them and create this team of influencers. 
Jan knew how much his life had changed through live streaming, so he brought them on board so that their lives could also change. They began to create content together with Jan as the leader in a way. This is where Jan met Fang Zuehong. Fang Zuehong was a 37-year-old vlogger with an account titled Aeon Floats Around the World. Jan and Fang seemed to connect well. They had shared interests, but what they both loved the most was sharing content with the world. At first, Fang and Jan seemed perfect for each other. But the closer you look, the more you discover that something about Fang was not right. While everyone on Jan's team got along well and their personalities clicked, Fang didn't quite fit in. The members of the team didn't really like Fang's TikTok posts. They were dull and a little cringeworthy. The team didn't feel like his TikTok posts were a match for the group's dynamics. While everyone else thought Fang was off, Jan didn't care. He liked Fang, and his awkward TikToks didn't faze him one bit. But it was hard not to see that while Jan and Fang seemed similar on the surface, deep down they were very different. While Jan made funny, welcoming TikToks, Fang made cringy, uncomfortable posts. And it soon became obvious to their followers. While Jan's TikTok followers kept growing, Fang's were not. Fang was struggling with his followers and nothing he did seemed to be working. His page just wasn't growing like Jan's. And that's when the hatred started to build in Fang's warped mind. Fang was jealous of Jan's easygoing demeanor, which had garnered him a large following. And the more he struggled with his followers, the more he resented Jan. At this point, Fang really wasn't getting along with the rest of the team, and the only thing keeping him there was Jan. But after Jan noticed Fang's presence in the group was causing tension, he had to take action. Jan let Fang go from the Fatty Goes to Africa team, and at first, Fang seemed to take it well. Things were civil between Fang and Jan, and there was no bad blood. They even remained friends. Fang understood why Jan had to let him go and decided to focus his full attention on creating content for his own channel. He continued to travel around the world making content. He started splitting his time between Nepal and Zambia. Meanwhile, Jan's TikTok account just kept growing. It was looking like nothing could stop him. But something was already brewing under the surface, unbeknownst to Jan. It was heading straight for him. At some point in 2022, Jan and Fang's relationship turned sour, and Fang started to hatch a plan to exert revenge on Jan, a revenge that would end Jan's life. The first strain on Jan and Fang's friendship came when Jan was heading to China for a while. It's unclear why he was going back home, but many speculated that he probably missed his family and friends and wanted to visit them for a while. When Fang got word that Jan was heading back to China, he reached out to Jan with a request. He handed him 10,000 yuan, the equivalent of 1,400 American dollars, and asked him to use the money to purchase a new iPhone from China for him. But when Jan returned from China, there was no iPhone and neither did Jan give Fang his money back. Keep in mind that these are just Fang's claims. Fang was so upset by what he felt Jan had done to him that he decided to hop on TikTok to throw shade at Jan for robbing him. Now, while none of Fang's claims were ever proven, it still had some impact on Jan's followers. Some of them felt some type of way about what Fang claimed Jan had done to him. It just didn't sit right with them. You see, Jan's followers were used to Jan being funny and friendly. They had never heard anything negative about him on TikTok. This is because Jan just made content and minded the business that paid him. But once Fang started throwing accusations at him, Jan's followers suddenly started seeing him in a new light. They started wondering if the Jan they knew was the real Jan. Some of them thought Jan was a fraud, while others thought he was a nasty person who had pretended to be funny and likable just to gain followers. What made it even worse was that Fang was a smaller influencer compared to Jan. So it kind of looked like a David and Goliath situation where Jan was the bigger influencer, taking advantage of the smaller influencer like Fang. But what Jan's followers didn't know was that though Jan was the bigger influencer, Fang was the one preying on Jan's kind and easygoing nature. But they would soon find out in the worst way possible. At this point, it was obvious to Jan that Fang was not the friend that he thought he was. He was a real life villain with a disturbed mind amongst many other issues, but he still decided to let it go and not draw too much attention to Fang's video by responding. But the longer Jan stayed silent, the more traction Fang's video was getting. So Jan decided to go live to shut down Fang's claims. 
He addressed Fang's claims and called them false. Now, because these videos have been taken down, we don't know the exact words Jan used or how he denied Fang's allegedly false claims. But what we do know is that according to Jan, Fang never gave him a dime to get him a phone. You'd think Fang would be the one taking the video down after Jan called his accusations false, but no, Fang only doubled down on his claims. He insisted that he had given Jan money for a new phone without getting the phone as Jan had promised. Jan responded, still denying Fang's claims, and a bitter back and forth ensued. As time went on, Fang's accusations got more and more outrageous. He kept throwing accusation after accusation at Jan. I don't know what kind of response he was hoping for from Jan, but Jan didn't rise to the occasion and just kept it clean. In one video, Fang claimed that Jan had sent COVID-infected food to his home, but he didn't stop there. He kept piling it on. In another video, Fang also claimed claimed that Jan had sent his associates to his house to smash it. One thing was clear to everyone following the story at that time. Though Fang seemed to easily throw allegations out, he never seemed to have any proof to back them up, and people started to regard his allegations suspiciously. But it wouldn't matter whether or not people believed Fang's allegations because Fang had convinced himself that he had to do something about Jan's treatment of him. December 4th, 2022 started out like any other day. Jan and his friends were visiting Nepal. Nepal was known for its rich culture, serene environment, and natural splendor. People from all over the world travel to Nepal to experience the magic that lies deep in the Himalayas. You see, like many people before him, Jan had been drawn to Nepal, maybe because of Kathmandu, its capital. Kathmandu is a place with dozens of aromas, flavors, and colors dancing together, tantalizing tourists to partake in its sweetness. From its old temples to bustling markets, it's a tourist haven. And Knowing how much Jan loved to experience food, it's not surprising that he chose to visit. While Jan and his friends were exploring all Nepal had to offer, Fang was seething and planning different ways to get back at Jan. But Jan would soon find out just how deeply Fang's hatred for him ran. On the day in question, Jan had gone live like he always did. He and his friends were checking out the food market and as they were strolling through the market, one of Jan's friends mentioned to Jan that Fang was living in Kathmandu at the time. Jan responded, I know. I've come to find him and beat him up. It was a joke, and Jan had no intention of finding Fang and beating him up. But that silly joke was all the momentum Fang needed to go after Jan. You see, Fang had began harboring hate for Jan for some time now, but he never actually had access to him to do anything about it. Jan was always at home where he was surrounded by people he knew, and any attack would be immediately stopped. But when Jan went live on his TikTok that day, Fang saw the perfect opportunity. Jan was on his turf now, a place he didn't know, surrounded by people he didn't know. What happened next shocked the internet. Sometime that morning, as Jan continued his live stream strolling down the market and exploring the sights before him, what looked like a good stroll was about to turn into a nightmare. As Jan and his friends walked on, little did they know that someone was already trailing them, and that person had a knife and one thing on his mind. Fang was said to have tuned in to Jan's live stream and was following them close by, waiting for the perfect opportunity to strike. And when he got his chance on a less busy street, he pounced. Jan was stabbed several times in the back, chest, and abdomen, and he was also stabbed in the head. But Jan wasn't the only one Fang unleashed his attack on. He also stabbed one of Jan's friends multiple times in the stomach because tried to fight him off Jan, while the other friend ran for his life. Jan collapsed in the middle of the street. His violent shaking and loud screaming interrupted the live stream and the screen suddenly went black. The entire market scattered as some people ran for their lives. Their screams and screeches could be heard all over the market. Other people stayed back, scared, but not scared enough to pull out their phones and record the dreadful incident. Poor Jan was half lying on the floor, still alive, obviously in pain and coughing up blood. His entire body was covered in blood. He could be seen in the video holding his stomach to observe his injuries. He kept pointing at a phone, trying to signal to the people around him to call for help. 
but no one came to his rescue. While all of this was happening, Fang didn't flee the scene. He stayed and watched as Jan lay on the floor, dying. He could even be seen shouting curses at him in Chinese. At this point, Things seemed bleak for Jan, as no one helped him. But fortunately for him, his other friend, who ran away, came back. And when he saw what had happened, he immediately called for help. The paramedics arrived at the scene soon after, but it was too late for Jan. He had lost a lot of blood and his vital organs had been seriously damaged. Although he was taken to the hospital, he was pronounced dead on the evening of December 4th. Jan's journey to see the world had come to a vicious end. But all was not lost. Though Jan didn't make it, his friend, who had tried to fight Fang off, was going to be okay. And as for Fang, he had accomplished what he set out to do. And when the police tried to arrest him, he gave in and let them. But there's more. While Fang was shouting curses at Jan as he lay there dying, it was obvious that Fang did not regret what he did. He proudly justified his actions as revenge for what Jan had done to him. What was last known of Fang was that he was languishing in jail, paying for his crime, but in late December 2022, fans noticed something disturbing on TikTok. An account bearing Fang's name had suddenly appeared out of nowhere. It wasn't clear whether it was really Fang or someone who was trying to use the unfortunate incident to drum up followers. We wouldn't know. But that didn't stop people from speculating. If it wasn't someone trying to drum up clout, does this mean Fang was let out of jail? How could they easily let him out of jail after so many people witnessed him stabbing and torturing? Jan to death. There were so many questions and so few answers, but people were still worried that Fang could have been released, especially when he claimed the attack was self-defense. Fang claimed that he killed Jan in self-defense after Jan sent his people to trash Fang's house. But attacking and killing unarmed people a long time after you claim they attacked your house isn't exactly self-defense. It's just murder. But in a surprising twist, one update came toward the end of December that put people's minds to rest once and for all. There was an update that Fang was in prison and facing a 25-year prison sentence. While people were happy to hear that, no amount of prison term would bring Jan back. To celebrate the exuberant life Jan lived and the job he loved and committed himself to, his family posted one last video on his TikTok account. We can't even begin to imagine the real sadness Jan's family must feel after losing him in such a horrific way, all because of jealousy. And it gets even worse when you think about how Jan took Fang under his mentorship, helping him gain followers and boost his content. Hey, thanks for watching this video. What do you think about this case? Do you know of other crazy jealous murder stories? Let me know in the comment section. And before you go, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. See you next time.